Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Qualities and powers must study. People don't get wealthy with their heart in another place because where your treasure is, your heart should be there. So by what system? Your treasure is in the bank and your heart is in heaven. And the world says, no. I don't sleep until the key to my safe is on my waist. There are people like that. They tie it like a charm and feel it as archaic as it is. That is what gives them satisfaction. And then they see you. Today you are rejoicing, tomorrow you carry what you have and give it and you are still rejoicing. And they say, no, you are operating by another system. And you let them know that my heart has never been around those things. My heart is guarded in the safe arms of God. Unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life. This is what God wants to make out of our lives. If you don't believe this part, many people will not be born again through your life because we live in a very controversial world and Satan has formulated all kinds of things to make sure people hate God. So God beckons on you. Are we together now? Chapter 15 and verse 8, John, he says, Hearing, this is how God is glorified. When God, Jesus is teaching here, not a prophet, not an apostle, Jesus is telling you how the Father gets glory. He says, herein is our Father glorified. That ye bear much fruit. Say much fruit. Say notable results. One more time. Say it. Say notable results. The Bible says that God is glorified. Not when we give explanations. When we bear much fruit. He said, by so doing, it will be a validation that we were mentored by him. A disciple is one who has submitted himself under the tutelage of a rabbi. And no disciple becomes greater than his master. But the zenith of your discipleship is when you become as your master. So he says, when you bear much fruit, you confirm that I'm the one who trained you. That I'm the one who lifted you. Are we together now? Romans chapter 8, when you read from verse 18 he says i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us and then 19 says for the earnest expectation listen very carefully of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of god not the explanation not the discussion not the argument the manifestation one of the versions says that creation is waiting for the sons to reveal who they truly are the bible says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear what we shall be like isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says arise shine it says for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified puts it this way it says arise from the depression and the prostration that situations and circumstances have kept you he says rise to a new light arise the body of christ must arise this 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 our this chicken thing that people do around as if god is a weak god that cannot pay bills god is a weak god that cannot lift men god is a no no we need to change the representation of god do you know what it means to represent him it means to present again when they say to represent means he was presented in error Tasha Cobb said there is an army that is rising. We are not just going to break every chain. There was no room to add more to that song. It's not just break every chain. It's like the Bible says to make a showcase of the multifaceted wisdom of God. Hmm. That principalities and powers may be shown through the church 
the multifaceted dimension of God's wisdom. That wisdom that is called the hidden wisdom through the ages that none of these princes knew for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So he's helping us. Say the life of God, the power of God, the revelations of God, the might of God will flow through my life to my generation. Say it again, will flow through my life to my generation. That God can find in a lineage of 50 people, nobody to rise. And you are not just a tongue talker. This thing has touched my spirit now. That you can get to a point where you say, I not only bring you a message, I bring you evidence. A witness is not a witness until he has evidence. When you go to the law court, your speakings alone is not your evidence. An evidence is a token of truthfulness. A proof that what you said is not a lie. We cannot just be noisemakers moving around, saying what God can do, saying he can heal, and our mothers are watching, and their lives are changing. I, I mean, for the worst. No! Witnesses must arise with tokens of truthfulness that we serve a God that is provable, whose might is demonstrable. It says you come before me with your spares and all of this, but I come before you in a name. I'm not a talkative. When Moses stood before Pharaoh, he came with a message, but that message was backed up with a mantle. Listen, let me tell you, we will never be able to do much for the kingdom if all we have is just a message. Tarry in Jerusalem. I already told you what to say. But wait until the evidence comes. You shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. That power will make you a witness. Because the power will give you the fortitude. To demonstrate the reality of what you are claiming. There's too much talk in the body of Christ. We wrap all kinds of things about what God can do. God will touch you. God will change your family. Amen. Amen. And at the end of it, to the point that we are tired, even us, we don't believe it. We know it's not true. Both the preacher and the listeners. He said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And Elijah said, no, let's go to Mount Carmel. If Baal be Baal, be God let's know today if God be God let's know today they called upon Baal the Bible says from morning till evening wise man because he knew that the evening sacrifice was a mystery in the spirit and he allowed them to waste their time when it was evening he said now clear the way for me let me show you how we operate in the kingdom he set up the altars and put everything and called on the God of heaven that day salvation came there has to be a generation with proofs. Proofs is not falling down. Proofs is the testimony. The Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I came and I sat down in his presence. Was Jacob not in a place in the night? No keyboard playing. But the Bible says that place was the gate of heaven and he called it the house of God. Meaning every house of God must have a gate from that place that touches the heaven. If the gate of heaven is not there, it is not the house of God. The house of God is not just a place where they play music well. The house of God is a place where a portal has been created that touches the heavens and the earth. That when you speak, there is a throne that backs you, validating that that place is the house of God. It is with this grace that we will break the pride of the arrogant. Those who sit down and mock our God, just because we are quiet does not mean we are disarmed. Let me tell you, a generation will rise. The Bible says, blow the trumpet in Zion. It says, sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. And then it begins to give a description of an army. It says, before them is like the garden of Eden. Behind them a desolate wilderness. Please listen to what I'm saying. The church has scarceness of the demonstration 
what we call demonstration is just for these kind of things that are happening now that's what we pride ourselves around oh i touched somebody and he fell down will god waste his time to die just to touch somebody's head to fall down what what foolishness we are talking of the ability to manipulate a territory and keep it down for the sake of god elijah stood not in a radio station and made a proclamation over a territory there will not be rain over a period of three and a half years territorial dominion the grace over territories he said well done thou good and faithful servant i apportion to you a kingdom there is a grace over territories until we get there we are just joking and making noise nobody will listen to our gospel we only have emotional people getting born again once here twice here when you want to touch the heart of kings you must bring result that is not in their palace I've not even started my message listen I told myself either God will continue to empower me to be able to speak the purposes of God in lives and generations you don't know how it pains me when I hear that someone that was prayed for still died someone that you know most preachers just move around and say oh uh, there's one testimony this person was healed how many others were not healed should give us a sense of concern you prayed for 100 people two people were healed is that a testimony that in a service like this must the man of God say demons I cast you for them to go are they that disrespectful should you not come with a fire that as you show up in a place you, you are bringing the altar of your secret place should they sit down listening to the sermon did you invite them man of god help me nothing is working in my life and we lie to people may god bless you may god change you and nothing changes they know they are not stupid to not return if they are blessed they will be too grateful to keep quiet one testimony of a madman being healed in gadara brought a decapolis to jesus one testimony one genuine unfaked testimony let me tell you all this fight and dropping prayer requests oh god save my family members there is just one thing there is a way the fire of god comes to settle in the center of your family and shift things within one week pharaoh said god is god pharaoh pharaoh a wizard confess jesus the results of job made satan to testify before god satan went before god and said i testify i went to i just didn't find anything i told god before i started ministry and it's still my vow i said lord i have no business wasting people's time i'm not there yet but i cannot sit down in one place how many minutes should it take for someone to be lifted how many minutes should it take for someone's situation to be turned around we have done well teaching the word but my brothers and sisters we must carry something when you wear a good clothes even you you see what happens to the people around you because you dressed well so there are spiritual garments that we can wear that can cause territories to know that there is a God in heaven. By the time you don't beg your family members for one naira, 
there is no basis for stopping you about spiritual things again by the time you sow a seed that is equivalent to the salary of your father all his lifetime and you say this is just the faithfulness of god i have to run to church and he says you are still a worker he said yes a faithful worker for that matter then we 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 educate them have you not been told that out of zion will come the law there is an education that will come from zion we have seen the one that came from cosmos but there is a curriculum we need to we need to tell the world sit down let's teach you this your pride that you come and harass a pastor harass believers no out of zion shall come the law he said we will come to you and say teach us his ways because of the superiority of the results please where you are now i don't know how i got to this message now but i want you to cry and say lord let my life produce results this is a notable miracle and we cannot deny it you can deny miracles you are not sure of. how do you deny a dead body that came back to life how do you deny a barren woman that is now pregnant with child? There are notable dimensions, incontestable by the pride of Babylon. Lord, as a prophet, give me genuine results. As an apostle, place genuine grace upon my life. Malakatos kabrakatos. Lord, let me not carry things I'm not sure of. These things I'm not sure of make propositions I cannot defend in the spirit. Lord, if favor is real, let my life show it. If your mercy is real, let my life show it. If the anointing is real, let my life show it. If prophecy is real, let my life show it. If the spirit of revelation is real, let my life show it. Let me be a bodily manifestation of the multifaceted possibilities resident in the Christ. restorer let it show if you are a lifter oh god let it show what name will my experience with you give my generation what title what new name will my experience with you give my generation what name will i tell my children i know you to be hallelujah hallelujah listen amen listen my bible says for everyone that seek it find it that means many people are not seeking just because you hang around a room where you suspect something is missing does not mean you are seeking my son he says pay attention to my words he says incline your ears to my sayings do not depart from them. He says, keep them in the midst of your heart. He says, they are life, not to Christians, to those who find them and health to their flesh. My brothers and my sisters, when you find the Gentiles who come to your life, forget about their pride. They will come. Yes, sir. And kings to the brightness of your rising. The worst is that you will be criticized, but no man can deny the finger of God. 
they saw Jesus and said this is Beelzebub he said if I cast out devils by the prince of devils with whom do your fathers cast out devils he was bringing a new order a woman bound for 18 years going to church every week and the priests were talking jargons. here comes Jesus and he says woman thou art loose from your infirmity and the people wanted to harass her and he says were you not told that as a daughter of Abraham there are privileges that are to you listen my success as a man of God is not in my traveling around to go and minister to many people I am blessed I love God I thank God for it but my greatest success is the testimony of the undeniable hand of God in your life it's true. you see let me tell you it's like a man seeing you drink water and saying what is there with water just leave him when thirst comes you must find water that means we must trust God to see the areas in our lives where the multifaceted dimensions of God are yet to be fully captured this is why although you are getting results you still come to learn because in certain areas there still remained a rest for the people of God you have not yet entered your Sabbath in certain areas by the grace of God you have gotten the principles of prayer for instance you have gotten the revelations of the word but you are yet to see the grace for performance so there is still a Sabbath that you need to enter in that area and it will cause you to continue to press one day like light from heaven something will open to you by the time you go back to your fellowship and then you are praying you will see the missing link and your eyes will see one day you will sit down i think he was i i was teaching years ago outside one gentleman he was um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure one of these uh, uh, scholars or islamic scholars or so he was sitting outside when i was teaching on the reality of heaven and, and hell and all of a sudden the heavens were open and that gentleman his eyes he was not in koinonia again and he was having a separate encounter with Jesus and that's how he got born again please don't criticize proofs value it results make your life worth following result makes your messages worth listening to don't criticize proofs your life will be difficult without it we call Harvard Harvard because of the proofs in the lives of the students that come there You're a man of God here, yeah, please listen. We need proofs. If you're a man of God connected to this ministry, truly let me tell you, I will be disappointed in, in the dealings of God with you if you do not carry a minimum requirement of fire and grace and revelation. There must be a token and evidence of truthfulness upon your life. Go for a meeting and you are preaching and someone is sleeping because of the nonsense you are saying you are quoting rubbish talking making noise all kinds of things do men not refer the presence of God again have you forgotten what happens when God is really in a place for some of us the one thing we lack is freshness freshness you can know you are not fresh and your stillness is detectable you can raise a song and it didn't sound like last week again what happened please sit down what did i get here mighty god our time is gone i'm telling you i couldn't even touch what i'm doing now let's let's at least touch something and then we'll pray if we close here i think you got something true you got something graces when benga was up here he was sharing these exact same things you see that if there be a messenger there are things that must happen in your life messengers are sent if you send me to a jimmy and i get to him there should be what you sent me to give you see that imagine that i say wait for me and i come and meet you and you say so what is it i made you cancel every other thing 
let's make the presence of God worth it let's make staying in the house of God worth it that when people say it's time for church I was glad when they said unto me not just for the formality nobody will be glad coming to a place where there are no results human beings are not stupid in the days of the generals service will be starting by six and by two two o'clock two in the night people will already be lining up because they know that one encounter and from nowhere here she comes a woman of God with power and fire and whilst teaching people's lives the presence of God should make our lives easy so I'm passionate about seeing the multifaceted dimension of God's presence and God's life and God's glory find expression in us and let me tell you if you listen to the things that God is revealing to you in this place they will produce results in your life they will it's true you've heard me say that we will all be great and the greater part is that we we'll all know ourselves it's not just a cliche that was invented by man's intelligence there is no way you will not rise that's why for those who allow these mundane things to distract them against their gaze on Christ and his dealings they are not wise because it is in your focus that you are able to walk on water and meet Jesus are we together now so we thank God for all of these things these blessings but our gaze remain on him they looked up to him and their faces were lightened the Bible says and they were not ashamed write this down please let's see what we can do and then we'll pray I tell you my spirit is fired up already when the presence and the power of God is visibly made manifest in your life then you are walking under an open heavens when the power of God when the presence of God is made manifest in your life then it is true that you are walking under an open heavens every time the heavens opened in scripture it was associated with rain it was associated like in the case of Ezekiel with the visions of God when there are notable miracles signs wonders transformation in your life and through your life to others then your heavens are said to be open number two when you step into an unusual dimension of encounters supernatural encounters the visions of God the revelatory dimensions of the spirit when you step unusual visitations unusual encounters unusual spiritual illumination these are proofs that your heaven is open please write it down so when the power of God is visibly made manifest in your life when you operate under a frequency now this has nothing to do with being called into the prophetic in fact it has nothing to do with being a minister of the gospel in as much as we know the fivefold ministry no it is simply a state of spiritual health and a dimension that you have pressed to that you can access the visions of God he says that I was by the river Sheba and then the heavens were open and I saw the visions of God I saw the visions of God I saw the visions of God Jesus himself was 
he saw Nathaniel and he said an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile Nathaniel comes to him and says while you were under the tree I saw you and Nathaniel was amazed he said just because I've seen this you have seen this you are amazed he said you shall see greater things than this what are the greater things you shall see the heavens so the heavens opening is not a small matter God calls it a greater thing it's a greater dimension that you see your heavens open and then you see the angels ascending and descending upon the son of man the same experience happened in chapter 28 of Genesis the Bible says that Jacob got to a place and put a stone there and laid down there for to sleep then the Bible says that he dreamed a dream and he saw the visions of God a ladder connecting the earth to the heavens and angels ascending and descending at the top of it was God himself and he says I'm the God of Abraham I'm the God of Isaac until then there was no God of Jacob he was creating his testimony giving God room to call himself the God of Jacob and then God began to proclaim blessings upon him and then he says surely the Lord was in this place and then I knew not he blessed the place this is the house of God the gate of heaven open heavens is very powerful Jesus one time when he finished speaking with the disciples the Bible says he was right there in their presence he began to levitate and as he raised a cloud received him and two men came and said why you know why worry about Jesus the same Jesus you saw going up he will return the same way you have seen him go so God wants to grant us access to illumination listen let me tell you it is no secret on earth that if all you see is what is on earth you will never rise beyond it it is not a secret that men who reign people whose lives are invincible in this earth realm are men who have been granted access to the seeing eyes and the hearing ears whether it is through the operation of dark powers or it is through the anointing of the Holy Spirit it doesn't matter you will never prosper in this kingdom if all you see is what people are saying there are treasures of darkness and there are hidden riches in secret places and the Lord vowed that he would grant it unto us is that true the scripture that we began to pray with the Bible tells us that the earth can bring out salvation salvation can come from the earth when you farm and your produce grow salvation came from the earth because you will eat of it he says oh earth hear the word of the Lord was it not the earth that opened and swallowed men and closed by where did they go to the earth is a living thing it has chambers it can hear that's why it can give life to seeds when they die the earth is like a womb something can be sown in it and it can give out and the bible says the earth like a woman whose pregnancy has been overdue open up and bring the salvation that is hidden within you these are not things that are taught in school you must be given access to the eyes of the spirit and that only happens when your heavens are open listen carefully because the way that we are going about our lives it will only end up in pain and misery until the secrets of God are given to us and the Bible says that the secrets of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants is God speaking to us the secrets of God you don't walk in the anointing just because you read a book about it just because an anointed man wrote a book no it is in his light that you see light you can be reading a novel written by Joshua Selman and while you are reading the Holy Spirit must open between that page and then you see something no one has seen that becomes the spirit and the life of God's Word and the entrance of that word not just what you are reading will give life to you and you will be able to prove it there are times that I've read I've been reading books and I stayed on a page for only God knows how long because I circled that page and I found out that the reason why I took that book was that one page I read something that didn't make sense and God joined it with another thing that didn't make sense and it became a key one two three and a door opens and there you are a new dimension and you will know you have entered a new dimension 
like a baby knows he's no longer in the womb the baby doesn't cry in the womb so when the baby comes out he knows that this is a new environment one two and the baby is crying new environment you can you can know i was here yesterday in the spirit and now i am here i was here in prophecy i was here in revelation there is a greater command of spiritual authority i see i know there is a greater carriage there is a greater arsenal you can know that the angels that worked with you from 2000 to 2007 they are no longer the angels you see it by the rate of performance that a word is sent and you see that there is an ease of performance you know that something like they promote a man and say you are now a director and you find a car there you find a new house help the same angels don't work with people all the time no no angels are appointed to levels and offices they are not just appointed to men when you step into levels and offices there are angels that are are left like that one angel one angel read your bible and see how many people they defeated when angels threw hailstone did they kill people yes the manna that fell from heaven although the bible doesn't say that angels brought it but the bible, bible says it's angels bread you should know things are changing in your life so the visions of god number three let me give us one more how do I know my heaven is opened? When, now take note, when there is a notable operation of favor and abundance, mark these two words. I'm not talking on finances, but let me tell you sincerely, my brothers and my sisters, your heavens are really closed. If you do not step into a notable dimension of favor and abundance, it's true. Joel chapter 2 let me show you something the Holy Spirit just ministered something to my heart we are going to pray then 23 ye children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he had given you the former rain moderately and he will cause down to come down to come where to come where to come down the rain the former rain and the latter rain in the first month then what will happen 24 and the floors shall be what intelligent people talk to me it didn't say on your stomach it didn't even say your storehouse it says your floors shall be full of wheat and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil open heavens open heavens where your floor is full of wheat and then your fats shall overflow the fats there is just your bands your presses with wine and with oil when your heavens are open abundance must answer to your life it is true it has nothing to do with background now let me tell you something i have learned when you operate under an open heavens listen there are dimensions follow me please let me have your attention when your heavens are open there are dimensions whoever comes within the spiritual climate of your open heavens within that time they are with you they will tap into the possibilities that your open heaven provides That means I can go to come, gentlemen, 
I can go to visit this gentleman and he has no business receiving favor but because I carried a spiritual climate I just entered his house I came to visit you and someone who has no business calling him will call him he's been manipulated by the climate that I'm working under it's true There are men who are blessed because other men are there. There are men who are oppressed because other men are there. Jonah entered the boat of people who should arrive safely. They were meant to arrive safely. But because a man who carried a climate of disobedience and Jonah kept quiet as if he didn't know what was happening. Jonah, your Jonah was in a boat. And people were there and they started losing properties that means there are men that carry climates when a man who carries a close heaven comes to you it can affect you listen please listen to what I'm saying Jonah sat down inside the boat while they were throwing their properties Jonah kept quiet and then they were about to cast lots and Jonah said look don't waste your time I'm the reason I'm carrying something that is making remember they didn't believe or didn't whether they believed in Jonah or not the climate was working Jesus sent the 70 with his climate he said go and they returned and said ah master even the demons were subject to us in your name and he says do not rejoice just because of this in other words this is not your making i gave you an atmosphere to go with your joy is that your name now is written that means you now have access to also carry that climate let that be your joy not that you are moving with another person's climate but now you have become a partaker yourself your name is written you can now carry a distinct spiritual climate he said that should be your joy Jesus is teaching here you see that so you can get into a place and bring what was given to you in the secret place you don't have to say this is what was given it speaks grace speaks anointing speaks let me tell you my brothers and my sisters if you carry real fire it speaks because you see there are angelic beings that are protectors of God's reputation upon your life the Bible says that these angels confirm the words of his messengers they don't confirm your word provided you are in that spiritual office and ranking they have been mandated to protect the integrity of God committed to your life so you will find out that the possibilities that happen in the atmosphere with one man the same God is there yes but the possibilities are not the same because the spiritual climates by which we operate in they are not the same the possibilities the system of defense that can stand for one person may not happen for the other you may insult another person and go scot free you insult another person and you will not last two days everything leaves you because there are angels is in Kedas they defend the integrity of God committed to people you see listen this ministry you see there are covenants and ordinances and there are angels assigned to signify that revelation revelations 1 verse 1 it says the revelation of Jesus which he gave unto his servant John he said he sent it and signified it by his angels angels signify revelations they confirm that it is true this anointing was given to this individual there are graces that were given to me and if I make utterances that resonate with those graces there are angelic beings mandated to validate that it is true if I make claims over graces I were not given you will be surprised how it will look as if I'm not anointed are you getting are you getting this now please get this this night's message is for impartation just get it after 
koinonia and just quietly sit down listen to it in the night and just soak your spirit and see what happens i really believe that what is happening to us is impartation what is an impartation a transference of possibilities that's it transference listen god does not transfer spiritual possibilities by distributing it to all men god finds a man and enters a covenant with that man to represent a spiritual portal on earth by which men can access that possibility so that anyone that will enter into that possibility will do it in alignment to that man and the covenant he has with god that's how spiritual possibilities are distributed god finds men uniquely builds their spirit enters a covenant that allows god to flow in that dimension through that one man then he mandates creation to align with the grace and the covenant upon that individual he said look unto your father abraham you will never prosper on earth neglecting the man abraham he is god's idea you will never rout the blessing of the spirit even though you come through christ the bible says galatians 3 29 it says and if ye be christ's then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise so even in christ he still routes you back to the man the patriarch abraham these are the mysteries that this kingdom operates in they are not opinions no And those who have done it consciously or not find out that suddenly the realm of the spirit is not particularly biased to them they may not be so smart but by the foolishness of of the understanding spiritual things then they step into it there are angels in this city once it is Friday and once it is koinonia time remember the Bible says the angels are the gatherers they move around and they war against the forces of darkness that will try to stop people from coming. It's a covenant. It's an ordinance. Please sit down. I don't know if I should continue or we'll just, we'll just pray. I really don't know what God is doing this night, but I'm, I'm happy about it. So I said, the possibilities, listen, <clears throat> Do you know why we sacrifice so much to be able to host superior dimensions of God's presence and walk under and open heavens? Because our alignment is proof of love. We can carry your climate and borrow someone your spiritual climate so that the testimonies that have been long overdue, your climate affords God an opportunity to visit the person fast because of your presence. He said if you enter a house, meaning you entered with certain things if they receive you let that thing you came with rest on them but if they refuse let that means that thing on you is a living thing it can move it can return back to you and you dust your feet and leave them with their closed heavens my brothers and my sisters let me tell you i wish that what i were telling you were a lie i would have just apologized to say sorry but it is true this is not a call to idolize men don't get me wrong i'm teaching you open heavens the possibilities that accrue to a man who pays the price to walk under an open heavens is a wonder nothing short of a wonder let's write so we can pray <laughs> let me give you three keys that will help you to live under an open heavens number one please write it no matter how many times you've listened to this listen to it again the first key is a life of fervent and effectual prayer the first key to living under an open heavens is a life of fervent and effectual prayer. Isaiah 64, please. Isaiah 64, please give it to us from verse 1. Effectual prayer. Prayer 
that must be strategic. Listen, let me tell you. Many believers, I can tell you, do not have a consistent prayer life. Many have a prayer life. The problem is the consistency. Look at me. When you give birth to a baby, the mother breastfeeds the baby how many times? For as long as the growth process of the child demands. There is no hard and fast rule. There may be some medical guide here and there. But once that baby is crying in need of food, what happens? A good mother that cannot forget her suckling child will have to breastfeed that child. And now when the child is weaned from breast milk, what happens? Feeding still continues. The consistency of the feeding is what translates to the growth of the person. There are loads that this young boy you are seeing cannot carry now. Give this boy the next 9 to 10 years. He will be able to lift it. Give this young boy 20 years of eating. A time will come he will carry you. Give him 2 more years in addition. He will beat you. Are you, are you seeing the difference now? now? This is somebody that you can beat and kick. Meaning spiritually that's how it is. A life of prayer. Show me a weak believer. You don't know anything. You are a shy, ashamed, confused, scattered person. Set your altars like Elijah and remain there and watch what happens. You make the secret of prayer. Brothers and sisters, look at me. The secret of prayers is not eight hours per day. The secret of prayer is staying. The staying power, it becomes part of the ordinances that run your life. Many believers are fire brigade prayer warriors. The moment you hear something that is alarming, you just crash into God and you sit down for eight hours in one day, praying and sleeping and praying and sleeping. No, you have to create a culture out of prayer if you want your heavens to be open. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, those who really pray genuinely with understanding walk under an open heaven. It's true. You, you can know the, the palpability of their open heavens can be felt. A man can be an accurate Bible study teacher, but that Bible study is not backed up by the ministry of prayer. You will feel something. It's like there is a resistance. The doctrine is sound, but the delivery is crippled because the heavens are closed. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens. This is not a discussion. It's a prayer. That thou wouldest come down. Why? That the mountains may, may flow down at your presence. That you will rend the heavens. You get up in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. The devil blows the breeze of cold around your life. You say, the devil, you are a liar. I'm on my way going somewhere. You don't have to make noise for everybody to know you are praying. Because sometimes you live with people that will be angry and will harass you. And, and, and it's honest on them. Someone cannot be working hard and just because you are the roommate, you are, you are mm -mm. if you are shouting under the anointing, at least he can understand. You can pray under your breath and command fire that will reach the heavens. Roast everything on the way till it reaches heaven. Like the sacrifice of Abel. It will start as if you are playing. While you are praying, the devil is trying to toy around with your mind. If our generation becomes prayerless, we are in trouble. Hear me, yo. If our generation becomes prayerless, we are in trouble. Prayer is not everything, but in the matters that only prayer can solve, there is no replacement. You must stay. There are times that you don't pray for one week to get that answer. You must pray and pray till a day will come. You will know that today's prayer was not a usual prayer. You will get up as usual. And the next thing you wake up and see that you have been under the anointing for a long time. You will return back with visions and strategies. 
you will know that God visited me. Do you know why many believers do not have visitations? When you mention visitations, encounters, most believers don't even know. Encounters seldom happen when we are just carelessly sitting around. There must be that spiritual investment of prayer. Prayer is an investment. You have to keep saturating your spiritual climate with prayer. It's like a spiritual bank you are making deposits. Let me tell you, when that cloud is heavy, it's not just over money issues. Answers will begin to come. Unfortunately now, our generation, we need to balance our teachings on prayer. Because sometimes in a bid to create balance, we make mistakes and we're indoctrinating a generation to ignore the ministry of prayer. No. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. My dear ladies, pray. Prayer is not for men. Prayer is for anybody that wants to reign on earth. Children, pray. Don't pray and watch children roam around. That's why I like it when we fast here and our children join us and all of that. Teach them to pray. Samuel was under the spiritual climate of Eli. Forget that his eyes started becoming dim. Eli was always at the altar praying. And Samuel could afford to lie down close to the altar. And he benefited from the track record, the spiritual investment of Eli. And he had a voice. Samuel! And he got up, went to Eli. And he received a blueprint of his destiny. A husband that does not pray will have a nonsense family. Let me tell you, in this day and age, it's not enough for men to just have money. You must be a praying priest not just a speaking priest there are many speaking priests you've heard me say it i challenge the men and by men i don't just mean married men alone i challenge the men take spiritual responsibility over your climate your children are sleeping and everybody is sleeping Shakos katabata. let them be used to hearing your voice in the night go and lay hands on them they want to wake up say no you just sleep let them know it as part of the incense let it be your evening sacrifice People watch films overnight. Have you seen that happen in many families? I mean in the night or night vigil of films. One will finish, they will slot it back. If you do this kind of thing in this generation, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, you will be too weak to prevail. It's a guarantee that I give you. You want to do ministry, especially, and stand against. Do you know the forces of darkness that fight an average man of God? Oh, come on. Have you seen bees? Have you seen one? You do drop honey somewhere or drop apple or something and see the amount of hungry reptiles and everything coming to fight. That's how you are. There are forces day and night that will fight tooth and nail to capsize the work of God upon your life. You must pray. And then you need fresh grace. This our generation is allergic to staleness. Once they mark you as a stale man of God, they will punish you in ministry for being stale. They will punish you with lack of invitations. Are we together now? Nobody will invite you to come for his or her conference and convention to just come and deliver nonsense. You must be fresh. He says the fire upon the altar must burn day and night. It must not go off. That means you must have the eyes to see when the coal is dying so that you trust God for grace again to put more coals. Now, it is my dealing with God and I have no right to just impart it on you. But let me tell you, I've explored this prayer thing a little and I can tell you, if you don't pray at night, you are not a prayer warrior. There are many people today claiming a prayer warrior is not somebody who prays in the prayer band on Tuesday. A prayer warrior is somebody who has an altar that is known by the gates of hell, known by heaven, and known by the result it commands among men. What time did Jesus pray? Go and read your Bible. Jesus would get up and impregnate his day because the morning is like a woman with a womb. You can impregnate her. And then step back and watch as she delivers for you in the day. Please receive grace to conquer the spirit of slumber. 
in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every force fighting anyone's prayer life here, especially if you have the call of God upon your life, I decree over your life that altar that fights your prayer life, I crush it down now. I crush it down now. Men ought always to pray. Sensitivity is built in the place of prayer. Sense. Listen, listen. If you are, whether a prayer band leader, a group fellowship leader, listen to me. Many group fellowship leaders are the least prayerful people. Just because you pray in the group is usually for ego. Your, the true strength of your prayer is what you do alone when no one is seeing you. Not just when... You can do a night vigil and a group leader can stand and pray just because he's praying for the people to hear. You must trust God so that men don't lie to you. They can put pressure on you. But when you are alone, there are encounters you don't have in a corporate system. You have to be alone. Lord, I'm awake again. One day becomes one week. One week becomes one month. One month becomes one year. One year becomes two years. And heaven is watching and saying, I think we need to measure a thousand cubits to this man. We have seen the grace. We have seen the consistency. In the rain, you are praying. In the sun, you are praying. Under AC, you are praying. You are trusting God for grace. And God knows you are human. So sometimes he sees the way sleep has whipped you. And you drag yourself in the name of the Lord. Whatever skill you can employ. Use worship. Use whatever. Find one of my messages that I was shouting and drumming every slumber. Whatever you can do. It is your responsibility to invent the skills that keep you prayerful. Don't assume you will be prayerful just because you are anointed. It is a lie from the pit of hell. I tell you this. Listen, I live a very busy schedule so I can tell you. Very busy schedule. You must intentionally trust God for grace and a strategy. If not, your spiritual life will go down while you are rising. I return from a trip now. Tomorrow is my younger brother's wedding. Yes. Praise the Lord. By the way, pray for our family. Adorable young man. And he's going to be getting married tomorrow. I'm here now, this night. I had to go and see them. When I returned back from my trip, from Abuja, I went to just to see them, make sure everything is well. Came back here to preach. I'm still going to see people this night. Tomorrow, first thing in the morning, I'm on my way to Joss. I'm even just going to show my face at the service and move because I'm going to Gombe. There is a conference. From Gombe, I'm going to Abuja returning back again here and then I have a meeting with Nathaniel Bassi and then everybody say ministry say breakthrough that is the killer of anointings if you only pray inside a plane your prayer the, the demons in Africa let me tell you something my brothers and my sisters we come from regions that require seriousness you must let the devil know you are serious for him to let you go even Jesus finished fasting and Satan came and said, what, what are you talking about? Jesus' fasting invited Satan. A man finishes fasting for 40 days and the first person he's seen is Satan. And Satan is not shaking and falling. Just sing two choruses, two prayer points and, and drum your needs and round up. No. no. There are dimensions. I trust that, I, I don't know, we may not be able to do it this year. We need to train people on the dimensions of prayer. This give me, give me tea, give me bread. Yes, God wants to give you. But these tongues God gave you is a deep mystery. If you are not filled with the Holy Ghost here, as I will always say, with evidence of praying in tongues, fluent tongues, spiritual languages, you have shortchanged your spiritual life. Because there are times that you need to hold on to the horns of the altar. You may not know what is going wrong, but you know something is wrong. And that thing wrong can be the life of your family member under a mess. The mercy of a kingdom ambassador. Someone's life is dangling. You, you are picking it in the spirit. You, you don't know exactly what is wrong. That is the time to pray, not for 30 minutes until that load is lifted. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. 
like a candle, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord. one more for tonight and then we'll pray so the ministry of prayer the Bible says Elijah was a man of light passion in other words Elijah got hungry in other words Elijah could sleep let me tell you this please look at me if you sense the call of God upon your life let me tell you step one is not to look for auditorium step one is not to look for an usher or a PA. Step one is not even to look for members. Step one is not to look for the person who will print handbill for you. I am apostle A and B and you disgrace yourself before men and before principalities. Nothing just happens. There is always another prophetess in the temple praying so that Jesus will arrive. If you see Jesus arrive, he didn't just come another prophetess was there traveling in the spirit number two sacrifice open heavens the macedonian church the bible says give of themselves you find that in second corinthians from chap chapter 8 from verse 1 to 5 it's talking about their givings but every time we talk of sacrifice people think it's all about money my brothers and my sisters the first sacrifice is you not your offering not your atm you can remove your shoe and drop in church and go back your shoe is a living sacrifice but you are not a living sacrifice god didn't say offer your shoes or offer your head or offer your brain are we together now yes I beseech thee brethren by the message of God he says that he offer not even your spirit your body what is a sacrifice sacrifice suggests anything that is constraining that means your body will feel it let's not lie to ourselves my brothers and my sisters the journey to greatness in the spirit will constrain you a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God the Bible says that is your reasonable act of worship say sacrifice yes as a man of god you will need sacrifice you are in an office where you are the only believer there automatically you know that satan has many bodies to be able to manipulate you you will need to stand at an edge in the spirit through sacrifice sacrifice of your life sacrifice of your resources second chronicles 7 Verse 1 to 4, let me not, we're not going to read the sacrifice of your time. A sacrifice is anything that constrains you. Anything that is not naturally convenient for you to do. Sacrifice is a covenant in the spirit. Psalms 50 verse 5, gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Sacrifice is a covenant. It is. Unfortunately, this our proud generation does not respect sacrifice. You see people command certain levels of result and you just believe they were it's just the guy just prays. God just gave him grace for prayer. The guy just heals. Maybe he was fortunate to just meet Benny Hinn. No. We need to be people who respect sacrifice. Are we together now? Gather unto me my saints. 
but among those saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice let me tell you this whether it is a sacrifice of your seed whether it is a sacrifice of your life there is a way you can sacrifice your life in the service of god you have donated yourself to god let me see the devil that will come to bring shame and reproach to your life they will obey if they obey and serve me they obey and serve me huh the bible says they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure service there are people in this ministry let me tell you before the devil touches them maybe a nation would have been dead first because of the way they have carried themselves like an offering the same way you put offering inside a basket they, they wrap themselves inside an envelope and drop themselves and say god take i've donated myself the devil comes near god if, if i if i see you near this world because my kingdom is being promoted there are many givers who don't sacrifice if i'm a millionaire and i'm giving hundred hundred thousand is that a sacrifice that's that's donation sacrifice of prayer there are people who it is their life's ministry to pray for me i know it and i see it sometimes in the spirit let me see the devil that will go to touch them god say ah, this boy this girl this mama is praying for me day and night oh god fresh fire and then one devil wants to come and take their life that's when you will know that there are angels on god listen to what i'm telling you it is true sacrifice john the beloved he loved jesus so much look at what happened unusually in his life when you study bible history they carried him and dropped him inside boiling oil hot boiling oil like you are frying egg and that guy just sat down inside that oil he sat down inside the oil everything they tried to do was just watching them and they said let's leave him in an island just dropped him in an island called patmos and there the visions of god was given to him what of daniel they conspired to punish that guy when he stepped into the lion's den an angel appeared is it not in your bible and said dude you come lion come daniel didn't kill the lion Daniel had an angel. You mustn't kill lions. They can be stopped. An angel appeared and said, Daniel, no. So there are touch not so. It's true. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not mine anointed. Do my prophets no harm. There are some of you, you have represented altars to your family. The darkness that usually will come to every time they want to come they see your face and god said i still have an ambassador in that family have you seen a dog try to pick something and you are standing there he will go around try to touch it but he remembers you are there he will turn and go around and you are there somebody is standing like an altar through sacrifice to your family there are people because of their sacrifice god has vowed that they will never beg you will be surprised to see how much they continue to disobey financial principles but when god is blessing people he will share it in a way that he must go around and you are angry god come on this is disobedience before everybody and god will say there's something they did oh when they were roofing a church the young lady emptied her two thousand naira account and dragged it like a fool and came and said god take and god said you gave me two thousand you're all i have vowed you must marry a rich man you will be surprised this thing i'm saying you will think is sarcastic gentleman just stroll around and goes mm, i'm not the will for you not because there's anything wrong with marrying whoever but just god you use see everything god gave you you can make a ladder out of it ah. your seed can become a ladder your life can become a ladder this man you are seeing let me tell you i submit to you in the name of jesus christ who is the son of the living god this man you see is a bank of sacrifice if you look at my hands what you are going to see dripping is blood 
there is nothing I cannot give God and there is nothing I will not give so when you see the little things God is doing here and there don't think it's luck before you admire any man's result find out first some of you God can tell you this brother is a prayer warrior but I'm here to teach him about finances for my name's sake take him home and you cast the voice you shed grace you sang praise and worship you even fell down but the voice to sacrifice something mm -mm, Lord I didn't hear you don't allow just because people make wrong these principles does not mean that it is not a mystery when God wanted sons he carried Jesus put him on an altar and sacrificed him the result he brought a harvest of many sons into glory when you sacrifice your time you will get something out of that time that is worth it the law of sacrifice is important in this kingdom there is no such thing as something for nothing I'm telling you this believe me it's not true as cheap salvation is the cheapest thing you can find in this kingdom and even that you must give God your time and your attention and then come and make a commitment the sacrifice of your ego is what you must drop on the line to receive with meekness is God speaking to us now yes. sacrifice is a language our generation does not like people come to church and after one hour they are frowning at the man of God as soon as they share the grace they will stand to gossip or talk about their knees behind a truck near the church for three hours that means they were not tired it was a spirit that was robbing them people hurry up in services as soon as the service is over they go and open the boot of their car and bring out bread and puff puff <laughs> and hug puff puff for two hours and not be tired Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is needful. One thing is needful to sit down and receive something by sacrifice. Nothing great just comes at a platter. Please let's not lie to ourselves. Where is he? This is a doctor. They didn't dash him. They didn't hang. They the Nigerian Association of I think medical students or so in, in Lagos they gave me they did a, a, a false induction for me and they made a stethoscope customized I've not used it till, till now the, the first time I tried the thing I said what in the world is going on I'd rather hear the voice of God than the voice of my heart <laughs> I mean are we together this is a doctor how he looks notwithstanding whether you like him or not is a doctor after years of laborious study are we together he has earned the right to give you injection turn he will turn and he will give you injection because he has earned the right are you getting what i'm saying now that's right that's how people have earned the right through sacrifice too they can look at you and say god have mercy on this and you'll be surprised you have been praying for two weeks Oh God mercy oh God mercy and somebody says Lord I join my faith you know this issue of I'm praying for you now because of how powerless we are is not even working again during the days of our fathers when an anointed man says he's praying for you you rejoice Jesus said Peter Satan desired to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not he said and when you are converted strengthen your brethren how by praying for them too paul said for this cause i paul bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you he's praying for the church you can pray for people my brothers and my sisters when you pray for men you take advantage of the climate of your open heavens and stretch it towards them like i can send you recharge card are we together i have 10 naira you have zero naira i can transfer 
two naira and it will get to your phone and your phone will be empowered and you will start work you didn't go to buy it but by the abundance of the supplies of that which i have i have given it to you listen healing is not the only thing that is transferable are we together spiritual climates you can share climates that's the reason why you can pray alone and after 10 minutes you are tired and one day somebody that has a real solid grace for prayer says come let's pray and even you you are surprised that four hours has passed the first 30 minutes will look like hellfire you are wondering this guy is still singing and i'm already tired no water in this place no food and this guy just let's let's continue is I, I usually pray for two hours and after 30 minutes you feel like dying but something will happen to you by the time your body gets weak to a level it will give up and there will be an ascendance in your spirit immediately you will find out that you who believed you will not survive one hour you are even the one that will tell him should we not go and pray tomorrow then you go back to the weak people you left before and wonder that you have been praying for 10 minutes just like them he said, let's round up. He said, are you joking? We're about to sing, play the guitar. Can your seed become a ladder in the spirit? Can your heart become a ladder in the spirit? Your sacrifice is your best. It doesn't have to be offered like an offering, but it must be handed over to the Lordship of Christ. What's that scene I saw? My very best Lord I give my very best lord i give my very best lord i give to you with all my heart my very best lord i give my very best lord i give my very best lord i remember a year the lord asked me to sow a seed if not that i didn't know the voice of god i will ask the demon to appear first i'll say good let angels help me tie that spirit let me tear the spirit one by one for that kind of ungodly instruction when god demands isaac even you you don't know what part of isaac to carry is it his head is it his hand is it his face god says all of isaac i'm not saying you should sow don't get me wrong and isaac may not always mean your finance your heart is heavier than your money let me tell you it's easier to carry money than to carry your heart many of us think giving god your heart is just giving god your heart is not just born again it's surrender it is painful you carry your heart and drop it on that fire and watch the fire of the holy ghost roast that heart and then it becomes like the bush that was burning you think it will be consumed but the heart becomes purified and you are watching your heart turn to gold and with the heat in that heart god will say now since you gave me let me put it you give him a cold heart of stone and he picks it and makes gold and he puts that heart and you turn to the nations and you will subdue them because of the fire that has come upon your heart tonight god is calling us you want to see an open heavens get used to sacrifice i believe that god wants us to be comfortable don't get me wrong but this christianity of excessively advocating convenience as the ultimate proof of godliness is a joke when you walk with god every once in a while there will be demands he does it on purpose to make sure he remains lord one day he will tell you to do something that is very painful it was painful for abraham to take imagine like pastor alpha telling this adorable boy now say him and his wife two of them forward march to one mountain on the way to kaduna and you see people say pastor alpha is everything all right sam it's all right and they hang this boy and they're about to kill him he said who asked you to do that work he said god do you know the embarrassment and god kept watching he said stop now i know that you fear at me he says and i swear by my name that in blessing he said if ye are the children of abraham you will do the works of abraham it's not the works of the law it's the works of faith are we together now we're going to pray this night our time is over but i came tonight to challenge us listen there are benefits to an open heaven it is worth every sacrifice that you commit i wish that i had the grace to share testimonies 
now it will be wrong for me as a leader to not share testimonies but sometimes i minimize these things because sometimes some testimonies if not managed will end up discouraging you instead of lifting up your spirit but there are things that i will share with you about my life and about what god has done and is doing in this ministry that you will not know whether to cry from your eyes or your mouth or your ears that's what happens you will dare a man that is a living sacrifice you will be surprised how god will act like he doesn't know you when aaron and miriam started talking against moses and they were talking all kinds of things the glory came and when it lifted aaron was immune because of his priesthood but miriam became white leprous as white as snow imagine a human being like snow as a warning I was, okay this is i've done this tomorrow you will know that you will not just touch he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed an anointed man is not just do you know how the anointing is made you have to you is a threshing floor you squeeze the, the oil and as you crush that oil the pain but you you focus and under the oil is dripping and is that oil that is purified that comes upon your head I want you to walk in power and I want you to walk under an open heavens. I told you something, I think the last time I was here was week before last now. Nobody is greedy. They just don't perceive you to be anointed enough to merit the level of benevolence they have to give. The same person who will complain giving you 100 naira will give another person 5 million and sleep happy that he had the privilege. There are benefits to an open heaven. There are benefits to sacrifice. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It will ease your life. It is better to pay the price in the presence than to pay the price before men. Men are wicked people. They will punish you and bring all kinds of excuses. Man of God, hear me. This running around looking for a name, stay in the secret place and let God perfect his workings and his glory upon your life. And let me see the power in existence that has the fortitude to mock the integrity of God over your life. For his name's sake, when he carves his name upon your life, he makes it a responsibility to defend himself upon you number of you have come from several places here because of what you've heard that the lord is doing my brothers and my sisters these are not the workings of men they are the workings of god but they are worked out through men men that have become living sacrifices epistles testaments of endurance and tonight i'm calling on you that if you seek to see an open heavens in your life in your ministry then you must among the keys that I've given you. There are so many, but I'm just giving you two tonight. I want us to walk under an open heavens. You will know you are under an open heavens. Multiplied visions. Some of us, you've not dreamt in five months and you think it's normal. Are we together? You don't see anything. The only thing you hear is an alarm clock. You go back to bed, even your spirit sleeps. What, what kind of human being are you? Darkness is looming around you. You don't pick any signal till it happens. You have dreams that have keys in them, but you wake up and don't remember them. It's a revelation of the weakness of your spirit. Did you hear what I just said? That you settle down and have dreams and wake up and you do not have the capacity. Was that not what happened to the king? He slept and he forgot the dream. And then another man did not sleep and yet picked the dream. A contrast of the health of their spirit. Hold the hands of someone. Our time is up. God is making us people of power. Let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control.
of every situation that has trouble. Hey, all my cares and burdens unto you. Hallelujah. I like you in the next two minutes while you are holding the hand of someone. Just begin to pray in the spirit. Say, Lord, I'm ready for an open air. I'm ready to walk in the favor that open heavens bring. I'm ready to walk in the blessings. Please help, help them, help them, help them. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Keep praying. Amen. Ha. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, yeah. forever. The power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm deep in love with you, Abba Father. I'm deep in love with you. Koinonia, pray. I'm deep in love with you, precious Jesus. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. Shedena, shedena, shedena. I'm deep in love with you, Abba Father. I'm deep in love. Hallelujah. Just one prayer point. I'm seeing like smoke just moving across inside and outside. Pray this prayer point. Lord, open my heavens tonight. Lift your voice and pray. And watch the wonder of what tonight's meeting will do. Pray. I'm deep in love with you. Hey, pray. He's opening your heavens. Financial open heavens. Spiritual open heavens. Hey, you came for koinonia, an encounter. for and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching